Today we'll be making kosamburi, a popular lentil salad from southern India. I'll be using different lentils, moong dal and chana dal which are very rich in protein. Kosamburi has raw lentils, coconut and pomegranate and it's a multivitamin food that's very easy and quick to prepare. I'm Shrikant Singh and welcome to our channel Happy Belly Fish. So this salad is a raw and eating raw foods should be small but an important part of every meal that contains cooked foods. The recipes that we'll make today are quite straightforward and easy but unlike other lentils recipe there is no cooking involved here so it's important to understand some of the basics of moong and chana dal that we'll be using today. And it's a common question that many have what's the difference between moong bean and moong dal. So I'll do my best to explain that today. Let's begin with rinsing and soaking the two lentils before we get into the discussion about lentils. I'm going to take half a cup of yellow moong dal and half a cup of chana dal and soak them separately. Wash them thoroughly first and then soak it in water. The moong dal needs to be soaked for at least 30 minutes and the chana dal needs to be soaked for at least one hour. The yellow moong dal comes from splitting the green moong beans and removing the skin or this green shell. There is also another split moong dal that comes with the green hull intact. The yellow moong dal without the skin, it's easiest to digest, they are sweeter in taste and they have a very creamy texture when it's cooked. They also take the shortest amount of time to cook. The split moong dal with the skin will take slightly longer to cook but it has a more earthy flavor and it's much richer in fiber. So when you think of moong, it comes in three forms. One is the whole moong bean with which you can sprout and then you have split moong dal with the skin and then the yellow moong dal without the skin. And chana dal comes from these brown chickpeas. They are also split and the hull are removed. The outer shell in both these lentils are actually rich source of dietary fiber. They also contain a lot of nutrients. But while a whole bean needs to be soaked for several hours and you might forget that quite often, a lentil that is derived from these they need to be soaked for just a few minutes. But that does not mean that you can substitute the dal for the bean and the bean for the dal. Most recipes it will not work like that. When you look at the nutrition profile of moong bean and moong dal, they almost look similar. But the key difference here is the amount of fiber that it contains. So if you are new to the world of lentils, start with moong dal and then you know you can upgrade yourself to the moong bean. And moong dal is everyone's favorite because among all the other lentils, it has some of the highest amount of protein that it contains per 100 grams of serving. And now that you know the different types of moong dal and moong bean, you can confuse others who are still not aware or you can share this video so that they can learn and you can have a meaningful conversation. There's one more special quality that moong dal has that it can become very soft even after soaking for just about 30 minutes and it can be eaten uncooked but of course in smaller quantities. So let's make our first kosamburi salad recipe with moong dal. Take the soaked lentils and drain the water in which they were soaked and then rinse them just once. We will add some cucumbers that are peeled and chopped into small pieces and if you are using English cucumbers where the skin is not so thick and it can be eaten with the skin then you do not have to peel it. Also, do not grate the cucumbers as they will release a lot of water. Add one cup of these chopped cucumbers to the bowl with soaked moong dal. If fresh green chili is available and if you are okay with it, then you can remove the seeds and then chop them fine. Removing the seed is one of those things that you do to make it less hot. And instead of green chili, you can also add freshly ground black pepper. Add one tablespoon of green chili to the bowl. Now cut the pomegranate on the top and make slits on the sides. Remove the crown on the top and you will be able to open this fruit like the petals of a flower. And this is an easy way to cut open a pomegranate and separate the arils out. Pomegranate is an optional ingredient and while traditionally it is not added, it makes the salad very fruity and it is also a great way to include pomegranates in your diet. Add one cup of pomegranate arils to your kosamburi. Add one cup of grated coconut and if this is unavailable to you, you can use dry desiccated coconut. And if you do not know how to handle this thing, then after the recipes, I will show you how to deal with coconut without the use of any special equipment. Add a quarter cup of chopped coriander leaves and two tablespoons of lemon juice. Ginger is also an optional ingredient, but it gives a nice zing to the kosamburi salad 
Moreover, it helps in improving digestion. Take about half an inch of ginger that is peeled. You can either chop it finely or even grate it. Add about one tablespoon of ginger to kosamburi. Mix all the ingredients well, but what about salt? Have you forgotten that? Well, salt is added only at the time of serving and this can also be enjoyed without the salt. So if you're looking to cut down your salt intake, you can totally avoid it. Salt makes the cucumber release the water. That's why it's added towards the end, only at the time of serving. Here I'm adding half a tablespoon of salt, but like I said before, you can always adjust it according to your taste. A final touch is always given to kosamburi by tempering it with curry leaf, mustard seeds, and asafoetida. And I will be showing you this in the next recipe with chana dal. If you like this video, you think that the recipe that I'm showing is really simple, that you can make it, it has brought you some value, and you wish to support us, you can hit the like and subscribe button and share it with those who may benefit from it. Now let's make the same recipe with chana dal that we had soaked earlier. Chana dal needs to be soaked for at least one to two hours. You do not want to soak it overnight like you soak the chickpeas because the lentils will start to smell. Then it will need excessive rinsing that results in the loss of some of the water soluble vitamins. The soaked chana dal will not be at the same level of softness like cooked lentils, but you can chew them without any difficulty. Follow the same recipe that we did with yellow moong dal. Add the chopped cucumbers, green chili, grated coconut, two tablespoons of lemon juice, fresh coriander leaves and salt. Mix all the ingredients well. And the quantities that I'm showing you for making kosamburi in both the recipes are quite indicative. You can, of course, vary them according to your taste and preferences and availability of certain ingredients. You can also add grated carrots, celery or herbs like parsley, basil, tulsi and make it different each time. And now for the tempering, which is done in the traditional and original recipe. So tempering is a way in which oil, which is infused with spices by heating them together, is added to some recipes. It makes them easier to digest. It's also a way to announce to your neighborhood that you're cooking something delicious. Heat a tablespoon of coconut oil or ghee in a small pan or a tempering pan. Add one teaspoon of brown mustard seeds, one or two dried chili peppers. They give a nice smoky and hot flavor to the oil. When the mustard seed starts to crackle, they start jumping out of this tempering pan. Add a quarter teaspoon or two pinches of asafoetida. At the end, add the curry leaves and immediately pour this hot flavored oil into the bowl with chana dal kosamburi. So when you taste these things together, the moong dal kosamburi that you have made with pomegranates and ginger and the chana dal kosamburi in the more traditional way with tempering, you will notice a remarkable difference in taste. And it happened just with the last final step, tempering. So you have to decide whether you want to temper or you do not want to. You want to keep it fruity or make it more spicy. Now, as promised earlier, how do you deal with a coconut that comes like this. First, you need to get a coconut that's good. And by that, I mean that when you're buying a coconut, always shake it close to your ears and you can hear the water splashing inside. Then it's a good coconut. That's the first sign. And because of the water that it contains, it will also be slightly heavier than the ones that do not contain water. If you're not hearing the sound of water, then either the coconut has started to sprout inside or it has started to dry or rot. To break this, you can either hit it on a hard surface like a stone mortar and pestle, but in most modern houses, you cannot break it on ceramic tiles or fragile furnitures or on someone's head. So a better way to do this without the use of any special equipment is to use the blunt edge of a large knife and to crack it and keep the knife away from your personal coconut, which is your head. When the coconut cracks, Collect the water in a utensil and you can drink this. It is very nutritious and sometimes it can be sweet, sometimes it can be salty. That really is your luck. Once you have opened the coconut, you need to grate it and you get graters which look like this, prehistoric tools or something like this. But you can also use graters, the cheese graters to get the job done. So with the two half of the coconut, do not try to pry it open with a sharp knife. It will actually slip and end up cutting your finger. Rather, break the coconut into smaller pieces with the blunt edge of the knife. Keep beating it until it's breaking into more manageable pieces. 
and this will make it easier for you to pry the coconut out with the knife. You do not have to use a lot of force. You just have to slide the knife in to some extent and it will come out easily. Now use the grater and grate it like how you grate cheese. The brown skin is quite edible. You do not have to peel it. It gives a lot of earthy flavor. It has a lot of nutrition. So do not try to peel it away. Grate the entire coconut even if you're not going to use the whole of it. You can actually store it in an airtight container or in a Ziploc bag in a refrigerator for up to a week. And you can preserve it for much longer if you freeze it. The good news is that you can also find grated coconuts in frozen food section in some supermarkets and especially Asian stores. Kosambari is always given as an appetizer in a meal and it is not meant to be had in very large quantities. Half a cup is just about enough in any meal. If you have a weak digestion then you can temper the kosambari with spices like I had shown or you can add spices like sumac or dried pomegranate seed or fresh ginger. You can also use sprouted moong bean. It's against the traditional recipe but you can make it with it. There's a whole video that I have made on how to sprout moong beans and everything else that you can do with it. I will leave the link to the video in the description. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon in the next one.